years into it. Really good. Yeah. Really good experience. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got back like an hour ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Long days. Yeah, long days. I agree. Because I'm nodding off over here. Oh, I mean, I you won't. You're too full of energy. You're like, like this. I can't sign on right now. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the September 16th, 2015 school board meeting. I'd like to start the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And do we have any revisions to the agenda? I do not, Mr. Chair. All right, summary of non-public actions from September 9, 2015. Mr. York made a motion to approve the non-public minutes of August 26, 2015 as written. Mr. Barker, second. Motion carried, 301, with Ms. Laporte abstaining. No presentation of recognitions. Correspondence? Didn't get any this week. I think there was any. <coughs> so we got approval of draft minutes. Make a motion to approve the draft minutes from 9915. Your second. I don't think I can because I wasn't here. Okay. How second? <laughs> <laughs> Further conversation? Probably not. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Aye. 201. <clears throat> Community forum. <laughs> Superintendent comments? I, I would just. Um, state that I'm, I think that the uh, school district has, again, had a very smooth opening. We're working on uh, detailing some things, uh, bus routes and stuff like that, um, and we're working very hard on the student information um, update or adoption uh, this year, and uh, we would like to give you a uh, report at our next meeting regarding the uh, new student information services status of where we are and uh, bring to you a timeline to update you and the community as to uh, adoption points and live points for the parent portal and for various components of that. And uh, other than that, I think that we're working very hard and I'm very pleased to, to let you know that we're doing a very fine job in the district. School board comments? No. Any school board comments? All right, moving right along. We're going to be going into fiscal 17 budget presentations, and we're going to begin this evening with curriculum. Has it changed since we got that packet? Curriculum? Yeah, or any of them, I guess. No. No? Okay. Well, yeah, we don't have digital well, Except for the page that's... Okay. It was... Um, excuse me, Mr. Chair. There was... Um, I, I, I was uh, supposed to hand this out. It's, it's, it's not about the uh, budget. It's just about the uh, timeline for annual meetings and all of that things. And I had been asked to hand this out. So I'll just pass this around if I could. Do you know if Michelle posted them anywhere? Budgets? No, not yet. She said she wasn't going to post them for a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. My bad. I need to go grab mine then. It's in my car. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, because rather than putting it out there, she said we're going to wait until we go through them. And then she'll oh, I thought she posted it to our pack packet. No. Nope. Okay. All righty. I am the, I don't know what this is called, off-white pages? Well, we, Page. we call it ivory. I don't there we go. Ivory. <laughs> Of an eggshell. No. We have a, we have a color. Yellowish tint, like my skin. So it's ivory. There we go. Okay. So I will begin. I'm going to try to set the, the the stage for all of the other presentations. We've kind of talked about what might be the most efficient way to manage this. So I'm going to begin with the memorandum uh, memo at the beginning of my section just because this includes highlights, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to go through and um, uh, look at um, some highlighted areas, usually the greatest expenditures in our area, and um, then we will open up for questions for the rest of our budget to see if there are any questions on, on some of the, the less essential, uh, less uh, areas we're, we're not highlighting necessarily. So, in the sort of after the first half of the page, what I've um, highlighted are the increases um, that, and priorities that I think are important 
One of the things I should talk about in this 640 account when we look at the actual budget is that um, this, I believe, is the core of what we're about in terms of um, uh, learning for students. That we need to provide them with the, um, the, the best resources we can, the ones that are most effective and also most, most effective for students and most efficient for our teaching staff. Because we, as I've mentioned before at these meetings, um, my goal is to minimize the amount of time that teachers have to spend um, searching for the appropriate materials. That doesn't mean they can't, but if they spend a lot of time because they don't have the core materials that they need, that is less time that they're probably going to be able to spend with our students in terms of direct instruction and guidance for students. So that's been our approach for the last um, three years. And um, you know that two years ago we were able to adopt math for grade six through high school. And since then, um, for this year, we were able to acquire funding for most social studies, not all of it. And you'll we'll see that in my strategic budget at the end when we looked at that. Look at that. But we were able to buy K um, K four and then um, six and seven social studies for this year. And we try to align that social studies aligned with our curriculum review cycle. But we were behind that cycle because of funding. And we talked in PERC today about working on that curriculum review cycle so that it um, more at, uh, correctly aligns with the reality of what we've been able to fund. And in fact, create probably two charts for you, or two cycles, one that is more based on the non-funding issues of re, uh, research, review, analysis, and evaluation of the materials and the curriculum that we have. And then a separate chart, if you will, that will indicate what kinds of funding we've been able to do and then that that we anticipate. But every time our anticipated amount or hoped for amount um, is not realized, then we need to realign that to match the actual and the reality. So um, what I've written, you know, at the beginning of this page simply explains that, you know, we have not been funded to the level that I feel we need to be at to do an effective job of this or to use our superintendent's words to the, be the one of the best in the state. Um, and so what I've put under priorities here is, and you can see that in the 640 line on the first page of my budget, um, equals $102,458. Was this all stuff we approved last year in PERC? That we just didn't have enough money to buy? We, we yes. approved a bunch then. Yes. Okay. Yes. The envisions would be a second. I was able to get um, a three-year payment for the envisions. Um, we, paid, made a, we paid half this year, and we'll pay a quarter and a quarter in the next two years. If, we, if it, the budget's not approved, we simply would not pay for what they send us is consumables every year under that contract. But the nice thing is it's six years. <coughs> so we would pay for three years and then not pay for three years so we can pay for other things. It's kind of like your car payments. You know, If you keep a car longer than your payments, then you can catch up until you have to buy another car. So next year it's 13000 the year after being at 13000 That is and correct. Then have three more years? That is correct. The next two items, the language arts 6-8 and the language arts K-5, are right now we are piloting in all of those grades two different products. One is, as it says, K-5 and the other product is 6-8. Whether we like those products or decide on similar products, um, the 6-8 um, would be one payment of 35000 and the K-5 which is more right in text because again, just like our math, the younger students really, um, it's better to have the right in text rather than having them always recopying things. Number one, that's a waste of time. And number two, kids with tracking issues or attention issues, a lot of us wouldn't want to sit around, you know, recopying and copying the wrong thing. So th these programs, again, that were approved and recommended by PERC, um, that we're piloting this year, and if it all works out the way we anticipate, and we'll be evaluating throughout the year, then we would be making three equal payments of almost $54,000.
It's 150, like a little over 160 or so. Correct. For the whole program. And that's hopefully estimating um, an inc a 3% increase if that occurs. Does that one work the same way too? That you have six years to pay. Correct. Yeah. All of, and interestingly, I wanted to mention that there are three major, major publishers now that have bought out most of everything else, and they must have talked with one another because we are looking at different um, publishers for these products, and um, they all seem to be going to the six-year cycle. Um, so if we had one the math two years ago, social studies this year. And if we do language arts next year, there's some overlap, but at least there's a little bit of stagger built into that. And what we're looking at for, um, and I'll talk about science in a minute. Let's let's stay with so, the 640. Go ahead. Sorry, so, if I, so are we going into year two next year or year one? Year two for math, and next year would be year one because they don't count the pilot year. If you purchase, your six years would start in the fall of 2016 for the language arts. So if you can spread your payments out over six years, can you break them up? They will not do that. We are lucky to get three years. Usually they do two. Three years, I'm sorry. You pay for three years, but you get six years of the product. But, but I'm, so you can't, all right. Can't do six years. Yeah. yeah. I know cars have gone to 72 months, but I couldn't convince them to do that. <laughs> What? Maybe we need to take a car loan out to pay for these. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mortgage. I think it's a car loan. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what happens in year seven, we don't get new curriculum approved? Would we have to pay just for that year's consumables? We would. Okay. Would they still be in print? Um, probably not. They'd have a new edition that would cost us a little bit more. Oh. But they do have one year. But it's amazing. For You would pay in one year for what it would cost half of the six years. So it's, it's, um, it's a much better deal. And they have to do that to cover their investment, I'm sure. And I've spent a lot of time talking with these three publishers. You've heard me talk before, you know, talk about cars. Um, we do a lot of negotiating. And um, these, are, these are excellent prices. So you'd, you'd said that if it gets approved, you'd still go ahead because we have five more years. But eventually, we have to pay it. So <laughs> I guess I'm just concerned, like the budget committee looks at it and says, you know, it's too much. and then. They cut the sixty-five thousand outside. That's one less year we have as far as to go forward. Correct. Are you talking about cutting it this year or in a subsequent year? Next year. That's this budget's for next year. I'm saying if the budget committee would say we're going to cut that in half. We'd have to take out our old stuff. We boxed up the trophies and whatever we had in middle school, different products, and we'd have to go back to our old things which oh, now are 2007 <coughs> or older. Mm. Well, well, that would be the decision point, Mr. Chair, if I may, mm -hmm. that if, if the district so chose to continue on with the new curriculum, the textbooks requirement, the decision point would be my going to the director of curriculum and saying if you want to continue on with that appropriation, we would need to find other monies within either the curriculum budget, which would be a little opportunity to do that there, or look elsewhere in the total general fund budget to reallocate the monies over to fund whatever the budget committee may or may not have cut. I'd just like to add, um, I, I think the right way to do budget is to prioritize your budget and not to trim things. And I think once you prioritize your budget, you fully fund your top priorities. and. Uh, from where this superintendent sits. Curriculum is one of our very top priorities in the district, and we really need to fund that at full funding. <coughs> and my recommendation to you would be, if someone uh, makes a decision not to fully fund that, they're not fully funding a low priority item, not necessarily having any impact on high priority items. <coughs> Makes sense. That's, I mean, that's what we agreed on as far as the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions about the 640? I'll only talk about one more line. And that will be the 650 line on the same page. And that is um, software, and it's Project Lead the Way Science K-12. <coughs> As I've talked about before, when we recommend, uh, uh, Perk recommended to the board last spring <coughs> that we adopt Project Lead the Way as um, a resource 
for science. Um, this is the amount that would be the yearly subscription to the content, instructional content, that aligns with the next generation science standards and the science curriculum that we will bring to you in the next two or three months. We've been working, especially at the elementary school, with a kit approach that aligned with the state frameworks from several years ago. And a lot of that um, framework was really, um, really, there were too many requirements, objectives under that framework. Um, and what we've come to realize that was revealed in the, the new science standards is that we do want to challenge students more in science. We want to raise it as a priority because we often think of only math and language arts as priorities. We can't forget science, social studies, and the special areas in particular. But with science, um, we want students to earlier on in their careers do more inquiry because that's the base, basis of science. We want them to be challenged to do more analysis and drawing conclusions and doing research inquiry again in science. Project Lead the Way has been around for many years, primarily at the high school level, and often its courses are adopted in career and technology schools, like our students go to Nashua and Alburn and so forth, and some high schools. And several years ago, we had a teacher, a physics teacher, who <coughs> taught the engineering course, who was trained in the engineering portion of Project Lead the Way. Um, but he has left us, and so our challenge was to get more of our teachers trained. And this summer, um, as I mentioned in the spring, two teachers from the high school did attend training, and that was for uh, principles of engineering and computer science, because we know that we want to enhance our computer ICT and computer programming options. So we now have um, a stronger engineering course with both a regular and an honors option. We have um, a computer science full year course, and this year, due to the scheduling, we didn't have students who had an introductory course. We have 32 students in first semester taking the intro to computer science. We already have six students signed up for the everyday um, level one programming course, second semester. In other words, it'll lead every day oh, to many? therefore be the whole six right okay. now and that's before the intro course and what we're really hoping for is that the students who take the intro course out of 32 we will have several more that will request the the second semester course and then our plan is to go to a level two of that course and ultimately then the students will be prepared for advanced placement computer science which is very very rigorous so all that to say that um, this 4500 will support the curriculum and all of the lessons, all designed, all of the videos that students would see, all of the digital resources for students, um, and then what you will see in the principal's budgets are the supplies that are necessary to support. There are no textbooks, that's why none of that is in 640. They will have first-time supplies that will appear in their 610s because um, they are supplies. And then they will have some consumable supplies. And most of those consumables do not exceed by very much what we were already <coughs> doing for consumable science supplies. So it's Julie, more the one year, the, the startup supplies. So this expense and the expense you say they're in, in their budgets uh, for a curriculum that we haven't yet approved. So that, that is correct. I am confident that you will approve it when you see it. However, that is true. But we will have it approved long before we're ready to, to do this budget. And we're piloting it now. I got, you know, we actually approved the program, even though the curriculum is not aligned, but it, will, it is aligned to it. Um, I forgot what else I was going to say. But, um, they, oh, so I described what was happening at the high school. Um, the middle school, we had a new teacher and teachers who could not attend this summer because it was well into late winter or spring by the time we had uh, approval for this. And so next summer, we have several teachers who are interested in being trained. But at the elementary school, we actually had two teachers go. 
uh, one representing the lower grades and one representing the higher grades who participated in train the trainer training. And so they, as soon as I can scrape together a little money because they need a, um, a minimum of five iPads for one class and they will, um, it's one for four students and because we can only do that, we'll alternate the period of time that those, those iPads are in first grade versus fourth grade. So I'd look to the public and anybody who wants to donate an iPad, we would gladly, and it can be a low-end one. It doesn't have to be, it can be one of the originals, it doesn't have to be an Air, and it can be 16 gigs, 16 or 32 gigs, and we can, we can be rocking. Um, and they're very excited about that, and if um, all goes well with supplies, they will then be, later in the year or next year, they would be training their teams, and then eventually also train the other two teams. So there'll be a lot of continuity with the progression from grade to grade within that science. Do you need five total, and you're just sharing between fourth and first? I'd love to have ten, sure. because then we wouldn't have to share, <laughs> but five is the minimum that we need. Actually, if it was five, we could probably, I mean, you can probably find like three, four hundred bucks a piece. We could probably find two thousand dollars somewhere, I'm guessing. Right, Frank? We're going to try, <laughs> we're gonna try, but I'd rather not borrow from Peter to pay Paul if yeah, I can help. Yeah, everyone said, you know, Frank, I, 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 I said it was a good guess, not practical, but a good guess. We also are open to donations, so yeah. anybody who's willing to donate or a company. That's more desirable. Wonderful. It would be wonderful. Right. So really, those are my only highlights. Um, I will take questions in a second. I would like to direct you to the last page in my section which is our strategic budget request on the page. And these are things that I did not include in the $102,000. I really wanted to, but um, I tried to be semi-reasonable. Um, the first bullet are for social studies required at the high school for um, current college board requirements. Also, the next bullet should is high school because it's grade nine economics, and they have uh, relatively old economics books given the changes in economic policies and practices around the world. Um, so that may not only seem to be five may, next year, six years old, but, but that would be really important. Um, so the high school was short almost $20,000. I mean, we, we were short 20,000 this year to be able to purchase um, according to our cycle, which was all of social studies. As I said before, we were able to purchase some other grades, but not those grades. The other thing that is a very strong need <coughs> is world languages. Um, a lot of our materials are 2007 um, vintage, and actually I saw some that were older than that. And so I talked this summer with, talked this summer with the world language people and um, we are suggesting that at some point we need to initiate a three-year sequence where we are replacing level one books, then level two, level three and four probably together because the enrollment decreases at that point. Now you might say, what's changed in world language? How we approach teaching world language has changed significantly. One of the competencies in world language includes culture of Hispanic-speaking countries, and we know that, or Spanish-speaking countries, and we know that there are changes yearly, daily in some cases, about the culture and practices and politics of those regions, and so those need to be updated. The other thing that needs to be updated is, frankly, the approach to teaching a language. Um, in the last few years, our emphasis has been much greater on communication, speaking the language. For any of us who studied language at some point, we may have studied it with very little speaking in the target language, but rather focused primarily on reading and writing. And we can't continue to do that. It's very important to make a language utilitarian that the students speak the language. And so there are a lot more dialogues and other kinds of speaking and listening and communicating back activities in those as well as obviously is what the teachers create but again to be use the teachers time efficiently and to be effective with students we don't want them um, to be scrambling for those things all the time that we should have core materials that meet those needs so that's the plan for world language our desire for language 
And then my fourth bullet really speaks to um, the long range view of Project Lead the Way to support this year's budget as well as ongoing. Because in, and the reason I asked to present my budget first was I'm hoping to set a framework so that when the schools present their budget, their requests will fit within the, the goals and, and the priorities that we set for curriculum instruction. So in this area, you see that we are going to need in the future some additional computers, primarily tablets, because a lot we want the students to have those um, that technology in their hands to interact with the um, activities in science, consumable supplies. Um, Jason, when he presents his technology budget, he will outline some of the things that we've put in there. And um, <clears throat> there is a request for a large number of iPads, which will support, if we want to support the project lead the way at the elementary school, trying to eliminate um, always having to be scrambling and sharing as much. Um, so we'll put a significant request in there. And as I mentioned, the schools in their um, supply accounts, they will have supplies to, to support science, both the one-time requests and then the additional consumables in that. Julie, just out of curiosity, why not the Chromebooks that we're doing the one-on-one -on -one project with instead of iPads? We could do that, um, except for elementary. Elementary is in the, um, is it the correct term to say, they're in the Apple format. So they cannot use the um, personal PC type of unit. And the reason that Project Lead the Way explains, because we've had the consultant here um, several times, she's a support for them, not a salesperson, is that um, they feel that the, the younger children use them more efficiently. Everything is, yeah. is touch pad and um, the apps that have been created <coughs> are all for iPad. Now when we go into computer science for the high school, they can use the um, other kind of tablets. Can we see that curriculum sometime? Or can you share it with us? Um, I can share it with you. You need a login and a password. Okay. And I don't even have it because you can only, even though I bought it, <laughs> you can only have it when you've gone to the training. Uh, so what I'd like to do is invite um, our two elementary teachers and cool. maybe uh, one or both of our high school teachers yeah. to give you snippets of what's there. That'd be great. Yep. I will definitely do that. Any other questions? Do you think, uh, have I clarified what our priorities are? I mean, because that's the important thing, as, as Dr. Mr. O'Neill has indicated. Yeah, this is great. Okay. So the last thing I would say to you, and uh, this goes for all of us, we'd like you to, because we know that you're going to be considering our sections the week after we meet, that you email us with questions so that when you come to your consideration next week, you'll have no questions, hopefully. You know, if there are any uncertainties or clarifications you would like, um, you can CC the whole board. We'll reply all so that you'll all get that information and have what you need um, when you're ready to do some decision making. And what the uh, plan at this time is, is that you would ask those people who are presenting this evening to be here for our next meeting to answer any questions at the beginning of the meeting. And then uh, once that process is done, we would allow them to move on with their life and have new uh, presentations uh, next week. So uh, we're trying to give you an opportunity to listen to what the various uh, uh, directors and principals are presenting, give you seven days to kind of review it, digest it, uh, email questions, and then uh, we would ask them to be here for the beginning of the meeting, the second the meeting after they presented to answer any of those questions. And hopefully that process will work. If you have any comments or any other kind of thoughts, we certainly welcome them. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Julie. I would also ask if it would be okay if once people have presented, if, if they could uh, get on with their lives, if that's okay with the board. I will stay only in case. Just too, to you're just too curious. Yeah. And I'll use the so word curious. I won't jump in. I promise. Huh? Okay, okay, I want to yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I guess we'll go back to the beginning of GMS. Austin, you're up. You've seen the I light. do not know what color we are. You are orange. 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 Well, let me make certain that's the... Tigers. Yeah, your lanyard is appropriate. We are the Tigers. Yes. Okay. So um, I would also like to go over my budget overview, but I'm just going to... Um, summarize quickly the pieces that dovetail with what Julie presented because a lot of it does. Um, we did go, um, we began the budget with in mind really maintaining current programming. I did talk about some long term improvements, um, but that would require, I felt, board action, um, specifically um, full day kindergarten, that's a huge change. I didn't put that in my budget, but I did talk about um, the advisability of that at some point in the future. But let me go through the overview and I'll get to that. So in curriculum, um, we there were a lot of changes in our budget that really reflected that the purchasing of textbook is becoming centralized and coordinated at the district level. So when we get to that part, you will see that. I talk about the initiative for science um, and again what I budgeted for when we get to that page is the purchase of initial kits for instructional units per class and that was K through 4. So when we get to that you'll see there's an increase in science. Um, I just mention and, and I do actually want to thank the board um, for, and Julie for making this happen but um, all of our classrooms now are using the online component to our reading, our math, and also our social studies curriculum, and that's huge. Having all of our projectors and smart boards in every classroom is great. I actually went to all of the third and fourth grade classrooms and when they were presenting to parents last night, and to a person, they were using it for that as well. So it is a great tool. Um, generally, the enrollment trend, it's kind of stable, but we are uh, graduating our last big class this year. We have 103 in grade four, and the other classes average around 80. So that also did have a budgetary impact, um, and so I want to bring that to your attention. The priorities, um, that's where I mention kindergarten. We have um, a lot of new students every year at GMS just by virtue of being the start of the school experience. We had 89 students who were new to our system this year. Of those, I mentioned that 19 were first graders who had not been with us for kindergarten. That's a whole classroom. So if we ever were to think of full day kindergarten, I would just like the board to be aware that right now, um, we have two teachers, but I would anticipate we would need four classrooms to have a full day kindergarten program. Because I do think that those <coughs> who go to private kindergarten are likely to return to us um, if we are full day. So just be thinking about that. Um, Scott, just so you know, in the last two meetings we've been working on goals. And that's one of the ones I brought up as far as to inquire as to whether or not it's feasible for us to get the kids not only full day kindergarten but also inside the building so it, it's something we've already started conversation about and then for that same point that I brought up that I think a lot of our the kids go to like St. Francis and other schools because they offer full day kindergarten and I think we can probably attract more even even more than ones we're losing yeah. which will then I, I think build our, our younger grades even more because I think that when they start at St. Francis for kindergarten a lot of them even say they for first grade and then they may stay for a few more grades mm -hmm. I think that may be true. Thank you. Um, the other thing I focused on, because we have an ongoing goal for technology, um, at some point in the future, expanding our technology position from half time to full time. I mentioned at the last board meeting when we did principal's reports that we were using some of Mr. Turcotte's time to offer grade two computer club. But, you know, the students have to give up a recess to do that because that's when he's only here till noon, and that's when we could fit it in their day. And the kids love it, um, and I think that, you know, the, the more boost up we can give them, the earlier for technology, the better for the long term. Um, uh, the, I have some fairly, uh, well, very modest requests for furniture. Our conference room 
is um, marginal and um, I would like to make it more comfortable for parents to come in and meet with school staff. Um, so let's see. Um, I mentioned um, that we have, we're trying to find enrichment opportunities where we can do that with the staff that we have and we are uh, doing that as possible. So major increases. The only major increase in the elementary budget is for the science kits in for Project Lead the Way and that um, came to a total, as you'll see, of about $17,000 for the first year. Subsequent years are much less expensive because you only buy the consumable parts of the kits. And there are two uh, major, well, several major decreases um, for math education. We've had many discussions about the consumable workbooks that went with Envision 1.0, as I now call it. And um, those are taken out of the budget because we have a multi-year uh, 2.0 thing that provides all the materials. So that was a reduction of almost $11,000. Kindergarten consumable supplies. A lot of money was spent buying the consumable. They don't have a textbook, so they had totally consumables, but we took that out. And then um, the other de major decreases was specifically the music education uh, furniture because we have outfitted the music room and we don't need to do that again. Um, and that came to about $10,000 for two separate lines, replacement and additional furniture. Our overall budget has actually gone down. Um, having said that, some of that has been transferred to uh, Julie's budget. So that's the highlights of the budget. Um, I think I'm going to just jump to um, the strategic budget request, which I believe is our last page, um, page, and then I'll go to some of the items where there is a significant change. Um, so <clears throat> the things I specifically mentioned are the staff of the full day kindergarten. As I said, that's more than a one budget year discussion, and so I felt that that would be appropriate to discuss at the board level. Um, and I also did put in for um, the, though I'm not seeing it in the, oh yes, the fifth, fourth one down, part-time computer teacher to full-time. So we currently have part-time, but I'm trying to expand use of the room and also uh, computer education at the elementary level. All right, so um, if it pleases the board, I'll just jump into the budget and highlight those specific lines as they come up, unless you have any questions. <coughs> Quick question on the enrichment teacher. What do you see that person doing for the, the first? Yes, um, that's been here a long time. Yeah. So what, um, what I would see that person doing, right now um, we have our, um, Mrs. Parent, is going to spend one hour out of her week, and Mrs. Um, Tate, is going, the reading specialist, is going to spend one hour out of the week doing enrichment for grades one and two students who already come into grade one with um, higher than um, expected math skills or higher than expected reading skills. Some students come into grade one or grade two knowing how to read and knowing a whole, a, quite an awesome a repertoire of math concepts and skills. Um, so I think an enrichment teacher could actually provide um, something beyond differenti differentiated instruction in the classroom managed by a teacher, but really an enrichment program based on data um, driven known ability levels for elementary students. Okay, would that person, would they function almost like a special ed teacher where That's they can either pull the student or students from the classroom or just work with the classroom teacher to give them additional work? It can, it can work in either way. Um, I had an enrichment teacher in my former district okay. um, and um, she did two things. She had pull-out groups mm -hmm. for math, for literacy, for uh, science, I believe. And she also then would work with teachers 
to provide admitting opportunities. She went to every classroom uh -huh. over uh, the period of. And based on weeks. what they're working at the time, would just kind of provide more advanced curriculum. I'm sorry. And then based on what they're working at the, uh, at the time. She would just provide more advanced curriculum? Yes, yeah, she would do whole class activities. Okay. So she was on a two-week rotation, and in that period of time, she got to all 25 or so classrooms. So in addition, did pull-out groups based on, a, again, um, data-driven, um, identified students who are very capable. So yes, similar to a special ed teacher. Makes sense. Now, could you utilize any of your, your specialist teachers in that position or any of the others? Uh, that's who's doing, that's exactly who's. I mean, art. Yes. So uh, the way we set it up this year <clears throat> is that art, music, PE, and library, because they're full-time positions, they are providing eight-week um, pull-out sessions, which are all for all third and fourth graders, but so it's not designated students, so we really can't call that an enrichment program. So what we're calling it is extended learning opportunities. So um, the art teacher and librarian, at least at the fourth grade level, are working cooperatively on a project. Um, they're doing things like keyboard skills, drumming skills um, that they might not get to in a general music class with Mrs. LaBelle. I saw, um, I saw the beginning of Mr. Hollander's PE um, extended learning and what he's um, trying to develop critical thinking and applying thinking skills with kids. I thought this was a great idea. He's actually having them develop games, um, developing rules and developing strategies for use in the game. So that kind of thing. It's going to take a total of four hours out of the class. But I think it really is going to tweak thinking with the kids. So I thought it was a, um, a powerful idea. So yes, they're all participating. And it's geared to third and fourth grade only, is that? Yeah, so we're having them work with the third and fourth graders with all the students. But we are really focusing on the most capable students in grades one and two. And uh, it's a, a half hour for grade one and a half hour for grade two in both reading and math. Those are options. So that's the way we've what set it up. What period are they using in third and fourth grade? What period? Yeah, are they pulling it like they must be. Recording? So they're doing it from 1240 to 110. Oh, right. um, and so. Um, the teachers are trying to arrange their schedule, so they're doing things like um, make up work, catch up work, that kind of thing during that half hour. Oh, okay. And we recognize it is, you know, and I had a parent talk to me last night, it's a trade off. If you try to give students within <coughs> a fixed day more options, you, you always worry about eroding instructional time, and we get that. Mm -hmm. But when we look at it, as it's four hours over a 10-week quarter of the school year, and mm -hmm. it's giving students a choice because we sent home, uh, we gave them preference sheets. It seemed like a good trade-off. Okay. Would you like me to go through the budget, just highlighting major changes, or? I actually have a question first on 440. 440. It'll be a significant increase over last year. And it's one of the budget committee which I'm about seeing that's leased machines. That's actually a, a number that the business office, we, we, we control the leased copiers. Okay. And um, off the top of my head, copiers as an expense to the district is extreme. Uh, as you know, we pay a leased uh, similar to a car lease, you, you, you get 12,000 miles, you get so many copies per leased machine. Where the district incurs a great amount uh, of cost is associated with supplies for those machines, as well as the number of copies that we are exceeding our uh, allotted number of copies per machines. We, uh, as you recall, we uh, instituted through IT a, a change of um, uh, the way that one would print to the, uh, from their computer to the, to the copier. 
is that now the, the operator needs to go to the machine and punch in their code to get the, the print. That seems to have had an, uh, somewhat of an impact to marginalize the number of copies that the machines are producing that go unpicked up. Um, I did a quick analysis, and I, I'm sorry I don't have it right before me, but it was around per employee we're producing over 20,000 copies per employee in the district. That is extremely high, a uh, million two copies a year. Subsequently, you see the impact of that on those lease machines. So we only own, I believe, it's three machines in the entire district. Everything else is leased. So it's just the amount's a little confusing. So the 12,500 is that for one machine? No, I believe that's three machines. Well, it just says two lease Canon copiers annual equipment service contracts. Then it breaks down 12,492 and 8,135. Right. So those, those two. I'm sorry, I'm sharing my. Yeah, no. my voice so those two amounts are for two different machines right. as far as lease. Right. So then the next I don't understand. Copier lease expires December 2015. Main office replacement copier for expiring lease. So we're projecting a cost there. In other words, that we, we do not have a new lease to replace that machine as yet. We, we need to project out a cost because that machine obviously will need to be replaced. When the lease, uh, typically when the lease is, ex lease work was to, is to expire, we uh, trade that in. Again, I'll, s I'll continue to equate it to like a car lease. So you get a newer model, more effective, and efficient model. But again, there's two different amounts here, so that's what I'm trying to understand. So there's copy of lease expired December 2015 in office, 1,287. Right. Then it's replacement copier for expiring lease. So that's, so in other words, that's the copier coming in to take the place of that one that expires, we're anticipating will be a lower cost machine. And if the 1,200 is expiring, why wouldn't it be a negative? Well, that's, that, um, it's like we're paying twice. No, I can clean that up. I'll clean those notes up. So I understand the first two, that's the least Amounts, right. but then the next two totals I don't understand. But is that nineteen six forty that you have there? Is that twelve four ninety two plus eight one thirty five plus a one thousand, and the one two eighty seven is actually neutral to the that's line? That's supplies actually. That's right. the next that's line. That's supplies. That's supplies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The total is a twenty. Yeah. Okay. Twenty two nine one four. Gotcha. So the column goes up instead of below. Ah, my yeah. problem. It'll take about three weeks to figure out one. <laughs> take you three years to get <laughs> down here. I still have trouble reading. <coughs> that's that's oh. common core math. Gotcha. We we can clean that up that's for you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Would you like me to um, talk about each line, or how would you like me to proceed? No, no I just no. think if anyone has any questions, the, okay. the lines are pretty self-explanatory. All right. Um, uh, okay. I see it. Yeah. So. Any questions on page one? Other than the copy of. Well, why don't you, Scott, go through if there's any any highlights that okay that I'll add do to that. your strategic plan to kind of. <coughs> All right, I will do that. Thank you. So on um, page two, there were two things I want to mention. So yes, it is true that our numbers have gone down, and there are two um, areas here where we have requested slightly increased amounts. One is for art education and one is for physical education. So yes, we have fewer students. But the reason for that is that we looked at the actual expenditures in 2015 and we um, figured a 3% increase on actual expenses and rounded up to the nearest $100. The reason I did that is that both art and PE are areas that um, often are stretched to try to get what they need. They're pretty expensive to run. So um, they both had things that they had um, ran out of. Uh, last year, PE went to the PTO to get pedometers because they're not included, but it's something that we needed um, for the program that Mr. Hollander was running. For art, we had a guest artist who was an intern and wanted to do a project on African art. We had uh, Heidi Miller had to go out and purchase materials that weren't necessarily planned for. So small increases, but I wanted to explain why those went up. Um, we've added two new requests, and on that page, um, one is a membership in the Professional Association for Mr. Hollander. And then um, continuing on the next page, 
the really big change, uh, page three, a decrease of $10,998, that is uh, math education. And what that represents is all of the consumable workbooks coming out because we don't need that anymore. Then down below, there are two significant increases under music education. One is the furniture for the music room. That was a one-time expense. And the other is replacement of furniture for the music room because we got rid of the things that were really pretty bad. And then um, on the next page, I would like to um, point out this is science education. All of those things beyond the basic um, supplies that we might need for science is 3,000, well, let me talk about that. In fiscal year 2016, this year, we requested $3,302.60, and that's the same amount there for basic supplies. The rest of what you see are kits for Project Lead the Way in order to get four units for each classroom. And that's assuming that we have only four grade four classrooms, okay? So that's the reason for the big increase. In reading education, um, it's a pretty flat budget. This is on page five. I will point out something um, that's a contingency, and that is that uh, beginning about the seventh line down, you see Harcourt Trophies. Harcourt Trophies is the program that we've used for 15 years and is now boxed up while we are doing a uh, pilot of Harcourt um, Journeys. So um, I talked to Julie about how do I budget for this and determined that if we don't adopt, if we you know don't adopt the pilot, we have to have money to replace consumables, so that's why it's in there. It's about ten thousand dollars, which we wouldn't need. Well, it might need be needed for journeys, I suppose, but we budgeted just for one program. So you're saying it, it is in here or is not in here? No, it is in here on page five. All of those grade one 85 trophies practice okay. books. So we could take that out if we leave in her curriculum for um, language arts? I don't know. Well, I if you've budgeted for the entire amount, if Julie has done that, then we could take that out. There, is, there are some that aren't part of the regular, and I don't know if I sent you that amount. It's a very small amount. I'll need to clarify that. Okay. I may be able to pull it up here from the um, quote that the representative sent. So we budgeted as though we don't accept the pilot because we don't mm -hmm. know what's going to happen to that. But it sounds like some adjustment could be made if we do accept the pilot. I did find um, only today an error that I thought I should just point out. For some reason, uh, we didn't. Um, get the memo on grade four, we figured two, four lines in here based on 105, but that is not the current number. So I apologize for that. I really didn't notice it till today. And um, they are two on page five. It says grade four, 105 to trophies practice books, and also trophies spelling practice books. And then on the next page, um, we have grade four, 105 ward power at 305. And then right below it, quick boards for everyday writers. We anticipate 85 would be enough to cover the incoming grade four. So I did add those up. If With that correction, it's about $625 that we, um, is really not needed, just being based on numbers. So sorry for that error. I'm sorry, Scott, if you can go back from page five, what we yeah. were just talking about, the, that you have trophies listed in there in, in case the budget for curriculum is not approved. So is it all these trophy books? No. So the trophies things um, only go from the line that says, about the eighth line down, it says Harcourt trophies. Yeah. And then um, spelling, that would be included because that's tied to the reading program. So that's the next group. See the line that says spelling? Yep. But everything from assessment on would be needed either way. 
those are not related. Those are diagnostic things for the reading program. Okay, but so everything below heart, heart court though would be taken out, correct? No, everything else would be needed, whatever program we have. So grade one, seven, reading and language skills assessment, everything above that would come out. Right. Yep. Well, that's what I'm asking. So you're, you're talking 1,300, 1,300, 1,000, 1,000, 900, 900, 1,600. The last one that would come out is 1,181.25. Yep. Yep. So all of that um, is, is a contingency if we don't accept the pilot. Everything else in the reading budget, we would need either way. Right, below. But, but, so you're yeah. talking about $10,000 mm -hmm. worth of trophies here that would be removed. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, is there any, oh, kindergarten on page six. I mentioned in my overview, that's reduced by $4,260. That also is about math journals, because we don't need those because they're included in the thing that um, the long lease that Julie has worked out. When do we start paying for those, though, Scott? I understand that there's for one math? consumable. Yeah, well, so like for kindergarten, that consumable that they used to use, you don't you need any more. Okay. And they include it in the upfront price now. Well, well, the book itself is a consumable, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, but you pay for the, whatever it was, the $50,000 for three years. So you pay for the $150,000, mm -hmm. it gives you six years worth of consumables. Instead of paying the 5000 every year. For every six year, years. yep. Okay. Um, there's nothing new on page seven. It's, uh, that's the kindergarten summary, and then no increases. Um, just quickly, $300 on page eight for the cart. We have a um, made from PVC piping cart for all of the supplies. We want to have a new one for the playground for recess. So the broken jagged pieces, that's a problem? Yes, yes. Yeah. It actually fell apart. We put it back together. <laughs> but, um, the only on page nine, I'm jumping to there, we have um, an increase of 1,120. That is for new audiometer, which is to test hearing. We have one that's uh, from 2000. It's on uh, reportedly the end of its useful life and parts are no longer available. But we have to test students both for special education. That's the first step is hearing and vision. Um, but also all students we test periodically to make sure they can. Scott, can you go back to page 10? I'm sorry, page eight, yep. just a moment. The last item, 810. Explain, well, it, it looks like it's never been budgeted or expended. And this year you're looking for $169. Is this something new or? I'm sorry, what by number? 810 on page 8. Dues and fees? 810. The last item. American School Counselors Association. Oh, I'm Dues. sorry. That's on my page 9. Oh. So, yes, that's another new membership. That's the <laughs> Professional Association for the School Counselor to keep her abreast of new developments in school council. Okay? Yeah, that's never been budgeted, but I think it's important. Are we done with page nine then? Yes. Well, page nine or page 10 of yours. All right. <laughs> page 10, all decreases. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to address those. The budget committee will ask about the overtime increase. Thank you. Um, we actually, um, are you on page 11? Yeah. Okay. So um, on page 11, <laughs> we have $300 budgeted for overtime. We actually have used that up this summer um, because of the time required to do the student information system. Our uh, uh, administrative assistants need to stay in the office at the end of the day if a student is not picked up at the bus or whatever. So we want to make sure that there is money available to do that. Right. And um, so Do you see them needing, I guess, next year when the SIS system is already implemented, though? Will they still need that time? Um, I think it's possible we'll need more than $300. Okay. Yeah. 
I think just leave it. Let the budget committee take it out. <laughs> a lot of data management, but just teeing you up for that conversation. I think three weeks. <laughs> I haven't discussed that. Three weeks ago, we were up to two hundred and ninety dollars. So yeah. if we project that out, it it's going to go over. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick comment on that. I think based on what I'm seeing with the need for training and professional development for new student information system, we will have the same kind of needs next summer, maybe slightly different areas, but as we adopt more and more uh, modules within the school information system, I think the training uh, okay. needs are going to continue to expand. Okay. But just the question is, does that have to be done on overtime or can it be done? Well, I think that I think that people have a lot on their plate right now, and I believe that what we probably need to do is to make available some additional time stipends for people to do the training, to be honest. I don't know as how we can continue to add things on people's plate. Um, I'm on page 12. Uh, can we go back to 11? Okay. Next one, Budget Committee will come after. Postage? Oh, yes. So um, I'm not seeing that line, <coughs> but we um, now, that's on my page 12, we're now mailing our own POs, so we anticipate that that's going to increase postage. That had been done formally at the SAU level. So with a reduced student count, will that reduce postage? A student account? Um, student count. Good question. Um, offset. So this is 2410, this is school administration. Yeah, did you ask if it should be a student? Well, I'm just, did they mail to um, parents? No, but this is the it's school administration account, okay. not, right. yeah, not the 1100 account. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, the, We have requ requested an increase in our non-instructional staff account of $400. We provide, um, again, this has become localized at the building level. We, uh, we provide the opening day luncheon for the um, staff and usually something at the end of the year. So um, that's the reason for that. Is that opening day luncheon? Yes. And then on the last page, 13, the only uh, change there is increase, um, is the uh, transportation under $25. That's because when we have math and reading uh, parent night, literacy night in the spring, we have to provide a shuttle to the middle school in order to have everyone the same night. So um, that's the cost. They give us a great deal, but it still costs us that. <laughs> well, I didn't put that in the budget. <laughs> Can I ask a question about page four? The increase for the 13000 that is a, mainly a one-time increase, is that correct? Well, that, yes. So the, Julie, Julie mentioned that you buy kits. Yeah. So the initial kits are about 250 to $300 a piece. It, you, the prices are listed there. But the, every year you have to buy the consumable portion of the kit. Those are significantly less, like 100 to $175 per classroom. Okay. So more or less half. You know, to, to renew the supplies each year. Okay. Good question. That's a good question. Can we have any other questions? I, I just have one for uh, Scott, and I mentioned to him the other day. Because I, I know we talked as a board and it was approved in his budget last year, then it was removed because it wasn't a stipend. In this, to run it, and that's destination imagination. Yes. That has been supported by the PTO, I think, for the past three years with the intention that hopefully it can get into your budget. Um, I just want to throw out there, you know, food for thought as far as getting it back into your budget. Um, 2000, 
I don't forget the years right, 13, 14, it was 1,524. That was for the program and for supplies. And for 14, 15, it was 2,028.77. So I'm just going to put out the, you know, the consideration to put in, if we can't get a stipend at least for a teacher to organize it, I'm certain the person who's doing it now would probably stay on. Um, but just whether or not the PTO can get relief as far as the expenditure for the program, which I think is a great program. It is. Especially for going into um, robotics as they go into LMS and into high school. It's like the first step for it. And it, the program has grown tremendously just in the first mm -hmm. year to the second year. Just wanted to put it out there and let the board think about that as mm -hmm. far as possibly getting it back in next year. I would just comment, I've had the, um, the pleasure of going down to Knoxville for the uh, Worlds um, several times, and uh, it's really an unbelievable event for our kids uh, to go down there with all of these other kids from all over the country and the world, um, celebrating creativity and technology and, and really, really getting the kinds of uh, recognition that oftentimes uh, we don't supply for those kids. So I think it's a great program, very, very, very worthwhile program, yeah. Just for over the last couple of weeks, we talked about what can we do to help the kids who want to learn a little bit more and they're a little bit mm -hmm. more advanced and just want to keep going. So and it's great team building. Yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. At our open house, I just would like to share this figure. The PTO presidents, co presidents, spoke Monday and Tuesday night and shared um, that over the last three years, the PTO has provided $115,000 worth of support to the elementary school. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. I mean, that's, you know, the things they run that we would not have uh, without the PTO is quite astounding, actually. Mm -hmm. And when your population of students is going to be less than their projected revenue, I'm certain, is going to be less also. I'd just like to thank, um, I meant to say to Julie too, but thank Scott for referencing back to um, actual expenditures um, as you went through your budget. I, I think that's most important that we continue to view actual expenditures and two and three year trends of actual expenditures. So thank you very much. Mike Leonard, LMS. I'd like to thank you for letting me go last. You're going to hear a lot of the same things uh, in my budget as you've heard in the other two. So um, I'm not going to say the same thing, but um, just want to start out generally speaking um, at the middle level things function very differently than the elementary and the high school you know we're transitioning both ends um, in my cover letter my overview um, I mentioned really one of our significant goals this year is to sustain and maintain um, the instructional model that we currently have which is content specialists and um, First, thank you, because we were able to do that again this year. Um, but it really is critical. Scheduling, just programming in general at the middle level is just so unique and different. And um, we just really appreciate the support that we have on that end. So that's one of the first things I mentioned in my cover letter. In terms of numbers this year, um, I mentioned last week our, our numbers exploded over the summer. We actually had quite a few enrollments. Um, right now we're about four, f four, I think we're down one, 458 right now. Um, the number that I use for my actuals in here was 446, which right now, today is at up to 449 um, for next year. So just so we have that reference, and that'll change. The October 1st numbers are going to be coming soon. Um, so programmatically, you've heard about the science program, and um, we've been over the last couple of years, and you've supported us in, in a lot of the math areas, uh, the seventh grade position, the, um, the computer lab. Um, now we're really putting a focus on science through Project Lead the Way, and we've got budgeted this year three kits. Um, similar as Scott was talking about, the kits are topical, and those are actually referenced in the budget and in the cover letter. Uh, so that is definitely a focus area, and we would see teachers doing professional development next summer. Um, to prepare for next fall uh, with that. The other areas really in my budget that are um, up or down are um, our services, guidance services, 504, um, and I mentioned science. 
But one of the areas that I've that I've put a focus, and you'll you'll see when we get to positions, um, not big money, but support areas that we feel are really important at the middle school on both ends of the spectrum. Scott mentioned uh, enrichment, and that's been a focus uh, in my budget for you know, the last few years. Um, but like GMS, we don't have a focused staff member um, around enrichment. And we're a small district, you know, and when it comes to accelerating kids at math, um, we, do a, we do it individually, and we do it small, and we, we don't have a ton of resources, but, you know, we've done a pretty good job of sort of being more aware of that over the past couple of years. Um, but like GMS, I really feel that we need someone that's dedicated and devoted to enrichment to the high achieving population. Um, and not just in the math science areas, but a lot of different areas. That would take on a look much like, um, like Scott uh, mentioned, you know, in classroom work with kids and then um, working individually with kids in some, some pullout. So uh, that's, that's one area that I think um, really is important. Another thing I mentioned in the overview is um, Title I. For the past few years, we've waited with bated breath through usually October to see if we're gonna, you know, if we can fund a, a, a math tutor at, at LMS. Um, and it seems like the funding has decreased over time a little bit. And therefore, um, we just don't have a reliable support in that area right now. One, one area that is a real challenge for us is we have pretty good supports around the tier three kids, the identified kids. We have a population that's sort of on that bubble between what we call tier two and tier three. They may not be identified with an IEP, um, but they're kids that need support. And the math tutor has been able to do that as best she can. Again, last year we weren't able to hire a math tutor till very late in the year because of the funding and because of, um, quite honestly, it's a tough position to fill in November, December. And so that's an area that I'd really like to pull away from Title I funding. Um, and put that in the budget um, as, as a, a tutor that would work with, with those students in tier two. And then the last position uh, is related to, we oftentimes in our, in, our, uh, in our chat meetings, we talk about students who can't do work or students that won't do work. And at the middle level, that can sort of take on a different look, uh, maybe than the younger years or even the older years. But the kids that, we know can do the work, but maybe they just don't have the same level of support at home or the same level of motivation. Um, in the past, a few years back, we ran a, an after-school intervention program. Um, we'd like to see that come back, and we'd like to see somebody dedicated to that. That's more of a stipend, tiered stipend position, uh, but something that would really help us and would reinforce the message of doing your work's important, having a, a strong positive work or ethic is important. Um, so again, I've mentioned that in here, but th those are areas, again, both ends of the spectrum that, that we're looking at. Um, in terms of increases, decreases in the budget specifically, uh, you see there, Project Lead the Way supplies, um, and I'll show, point that out to you when, you when we get into the actual document of the budget, but um, it's about $6,000, a little more than $6,000 for Project Lead the Way. Um, we also have an increase in 504 students, uh, some hearing impaired students that have equipment, and so that's a pretty significant increase. That's not only equipment, but also services that are provided, uh, cons consultation uh, for those students. And then, uh, again, I'll point this out when we get there, but last year, uh, we requested some additional equipment for our music program, some instruments, and thank you. You, you supported that. When it got to the budget committee level, um, they were very supportive, but they said, you know, we just can't fund that whole amount this year, so why don't we break it into two years? So we funded part of it this year, and I, I've reflected the second part of that in, in this budget here, <coughs> so you'll see that when we get to music. Um, like GMS, we're piloting um, ELA, English Language Arts, uh, materials, so there's a, a, a shift there. Um, and overall, the budget is up a little bit based on those, it's really based on the guidance and the, and the science areas. Any questions? So is the math tutor in here, you said, or isn't in here? 
It's not. The math tutor? Yeah, I thought you said you were, I thought you said you were including yeah. it. Yeah. It's in the cover on the last page. It's in. Okay, but it's not in the budget. Yeah. The, the oh. Salary oh yeah, that's a separate. Yeah. So be in the, the so We had the we had the administrators address strategically okay. areas that they would like to have um, either in their budget. In this case, it would be that would be a salary. So that will come to you in a separate sheet if, if the superintendent decides to move on. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It would be a new position or a stipend. I have a question on the ELA budget. With the piloting, it, are you still going to need this? I wish you paid Page four. Can we go? Wait, I'm sorry. Can we go back can to page one? Wait, yep. I go back to page one. Just too quick. Yeah. Actually, one. Yep. I, have, I have two things on page one. I think I've asked this last year too, and maybe it's a different machine. But why is your limiting um, maintenance of the machine twice as much as GMS? Why was it twice as much? Why is it? Yeah. Um, that is not only for the laminator, but I know that um, there have. I'd have to look into that, Brian, okay. and get back to you. All right. Yeah, because if you look at the history right on that line, it, it doesn't reflect it. But I talked to. Uh, it says zero. <laughs> right. Yeah, let me get, look into that and get okay. back to you on that but line. But then my next question is on 440, which I'm taking as a typo. That's the same. It, it's showing the lease in, of the <coughs> machine, so it's going to cost negative 18000 That's the rental. That's the copier rental. I'm assuming it's that's showing that you're getting a credit of 18000 I crossed that out. I assumed it was just a... Well, if it is... Yeah, we had... Uh, that's not a typo. That's actually a computation of the Cognos program. We have a call in to our consultant actually in Denver, Colorado, because right. we've had some of these. That it's like an Excel spreadsheet. That's a formula, and there for some reason the formula is. So glitching. is that not a negative or is it a positive? I'm just, just wondering. It's flat. It, I mean, do you add thirty six? It's flat. It, it's 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 a flat. Well, it's, it's like forty five bucks. Yeah. No, but I guess what I'm asking when you roll that number into the budget at the end, is it taking eighteen thousand out or is it adding the eighteen thousand in? It's it's taking it out. Right, so I assume again. I I'm only well, assuming. No, I'm, I'm asking because that would mean his budget is actually thirty-six thousand dollars more when you get to the bottom line. Right. So it's we're gonna we're gonna fix and run the the actual budget request. I assume those numbers are accurate. So if I strike the bottom down, line, so instead of the don't look at the increase dollars. decrease, look at the bottom line number. Right. Okay. So All right. And I'll get a clarification on that as soon as we. Um, Just I mean that's a big swing, thirty-six thousand. So. Yeah. So should I strike 18, 439 and put plus 45? Yes. And Brian, I, I've got to look into that. There's something with all the zeros across that. Okay. Well, I would think if you're, the lease is up, you're going to replace it. So even if this showed up as a negative 18,000, there should be a yeah, project to be, counteract it, it right? Be negative. That, that again, that's computation of the system. That That okay. is not anything that we input. It, it's it's a company like an Excel spreadsheet. It's, it's that's a formula driven number. We don't need to put that number. Okay, yeah. so there'll be some sort of charge. So there'll there. be there, yeah. It's going to be forty five dollars more than last year. So it's still going to be eighteen thousand. So, so the number is the, the number is accurate relative to the budget request. The calculation of the differential is is a computation of the system. Okay. We, we've had a, a few of those that we picked up on. We just don't have the answer because the formula, as much as we know, Cognos. Is accurate, and for some reason it's it's not computed properly. Always blaming on the system. <laughs> it's a system error. <laughs> I'm also at page one. Okay, on page two, there is uh, under facts equipment. There is um, we're replacing this year a range. Next year it's probably going to be uh, either a range or a dishwasher. But th th that equipment is. Is pretty old in there, so we've been doing a replacement each year. Um, but that's the line is level. On page three, uh, music education, as I mentioned, uh, the musical instruments under additional equipment. That number is down from this year, but still a significant uh, number for the. Uh, for the new instruments, two two clarinets and a saxophone. Were those ones you asked for last year, Tom? No. The well, yeah, we did. W yes, the, we asked for those 
different instruments last year. I believe it was a xylophone and bells last year, and different ones for this. Well, I remember the baritone sax you asked for. I've got my other uh, copy. I believe it was. Um, a xylophone, bells, a bass clarinet, saxophone. Um. Yeah, her list this year for the neck for this next budget is the two clarinets and a baritone sax. Yeah. So. <clears throat> uh, also on page three, under the science supplies, is the project lead the way. Page five guidance is the 504 increase. So back on page four here. Yep. LMS reading education, these supplies, specialized instruction, grade five consumables. So about the a thousand. The journeys here, at the, or the journals here at the end. The, do you need that with the pilot program, or is this in there contingent on the pilot? Yeah. So like GMS, and I can I can um, tease each number out a little more, but. Uh, I'd say about a thousand dollars of it is is the consumables that would be dedicated to that program. The rest of it, we have a lot of diagnostic um, materials, materials that the reading, the reading specialists use with kids. Okay. So that's a large part of that of that part of uh, of the budget. Yeah, page five guidance, the, the 504 area that I yeah. that I mentioned. On page six. And that goes on to page six. So to page seven. Page seven, no significant increases or there's a couple decreases there on page seven. Tom the date? Are all your rooms set up like GMS now with the smart board or the projector board? With the exception, exception of a couple, yes. Because yeah. so yeah. that was my question, is why do we need overhead bulbs? There are still teachers who use overheads. But isn't that, <laughs> that board is basically an overhead board, isn't it? That can be utilized well, the same way? Yeah, I mean, we're trying to get away from that. that we've transitioned, but we still have a couple overheads that, that function. In the building. Well, I'm sure they use. still function. It's just <laughs> I can no. yeah. Is there something you need to. When the computer doesn't work, it happens a lot. You use it's it over the application. I'm sorry. All right. Page eight. Page eight again. A few numbers up and down, but nothing significant there. Page nine. Transportation increase, that's just a standard contract. Yeah. Referees didn't go up though, huh? I noticed. Well, no, I mean, that's always a tough one to budget because of postseason, how, how many yeah. games we're going to, we've done well, but um, we feel we can cover it with that, that number. I think the answer, yes, we do anticipate 
as typical. Go up a little bit. Those go up, but I think to the superintendent, part of the charge of the budget managers was if you anticipate some increase, find the funding for that increase within your budget. So I think okay. that's a prime example of just that. We know the rates for the referees are going to go up, but we know typically you know, we'll spend all the money's needed. Because they'll, yeah, so we'll cover it. It'll probably be relatively minor. Right. Right. Exactly. So, Tom, is your budget for um, athletics for the postseason, is that based on just like one game per? Yeah, it's a rough estimate. I, I, I realize that, but is it just one per sport? Yeah. Do you figure out? Assuming it's an away game, too. Right. And that's where the transportation comes in. Okay. Any other questions yeah. for LMS? Thank you. Well, I actually have a question. It's for, from John York for, for both GMS and LMS, and is just inquiring as to whether or not that. Something you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he called it as on a soccer field. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just wants to know as to whether or not any after school STEM programs, if they're funded to meet what you need. So at LMS right now, we don't have any district funded we have a di team actually it's happening it's evolved it's it's organizing right as we speak and we also have a lego robotics team um, both have been volunteer either pto or um, pto funded but parents have stepped in okay. so um, you know when, I, when we've had this discussion before in the past usually i've been told to go back look at our co-curricular list and if we can reallocate the money from one club to another club look at our enrollment and that's how we've done it but we have not been able to because we're really running on uh, an ascent what I would consider an essential co-curricular program right now drama club yearbook student council you know the ones we run really are well attended they're they're running really really well and they're popular with kids so um, to answer your question about after school those would be the two areas DI and and um, Lego robotics that would be and like Scott, I mean, I have nice his numbers. Have. I don't have yours. So could you bring that for the next meeting, just at least have dollar amounts? I mean, so you'd have some kind of idea of like what ballpark run for a stipend for somebody that would run that. That's what a stipend is, but because I understand the stipend if it's on CBA that you, you can't have a new one until the new CBA. Yeah. So I guess just more or less what your cost is right now that you're experiencing. If there's any okay. others that yep. that you would do if you had the, the, the money. Sure. Scott, I don't know if there's anything outside of DI. The uh, well, the only two student activities that have after school activities that are funded through the school budget at GMS, we have a stipend for music which covers chorus. That's a weekly uh, before school event plus evening and weekend events, and then we have money for the scarecrow jamboree. So I wouldn't say either of those is really in the STEM category, um, though they're important. Um, so everything else. We have a lot going on. Is funded through the PTO. Right. I know they do the Lego program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, that's also through PTO. Right. right? Which yeah. is a pretty big expenditure, at least to get it going. So, mm -hmm. but if there is anything else that I mean, if there was a program that you would do, if you could be funded for it, if you could just bring that, just you know, food okay. for thought. I'm sorry. Um, uh, math counts is another one that we. It's a math competition team. They also run through PTO. Um, we've had a volunteer coaching for a few years. Thank you. The, Tom, I think you had emailed me recently regarding the um, cross-country team participation. I think that's an important uh, thing for the board to hear about because I think that is part of this dialogue we're having right now. Our cross-country team, I, I've reported this out for a few years now, and you know, first year we thought it was an anomaly. We've got over 100 kids on the cross-country team. We're now over... We're in our third year of having over 100 kids. This year, 140 students are running. We've got an enrollment of 458, and we've got 140 kids running cross country. We had, we had a home meet yesterday, and it was just like herding cats up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two coaches, and uh, they do the best they can. They do a great job. Um, but we feel that it's become more of a safety issue now, where you know, we have two adults for, for 140 kids. Um, actually, I had somebody come by yesterday 
asking if they could join and <laughs> you know so 141 but um so we are we we've had conversations um mr o'neill and mr markowitz and i about um adding an assistant coach to the to the team to sooner than later to try to avert uh and the only reason I bring that up is I think because there's, a, there's, there's clearly within that area the desire to have after school activities is very strong and I'm sure the PTO supported activities are also very very well attended and um, I think that we have to continue to look at how do we increase um, during and after school opportunities for children and how do we support those as a uh, public school district. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Here we go. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, they can, they can go. Uh, absolutely. M Mr. Chair, you are my boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just curious what would we would see, you know, have any questions on the manifest? Yeah. Have yeah, yeah. For future years. I think I saw the manifest. If I may, just to reiterate what the superintendent said, so if the board this evening has questions for either Tom Scott or Julie, if you could email those to them, and they will get obviously their answers back to you, or have some deliverables back for you at next week's meeting. Okay, and then at next week's meeting, we will have some updates. The intent is to give you just slip pages as we change portions of their budget, not the whole thing, um, so that we would have those appropriate slip pages if if they were to make some changes and we'll, we'll clear up some issues that were addressed here this evening. We'll, give you, we'll send out to you the appropriate. And once they make their second presentation to you, that it's at that point we will then uh, post onto the uh, district's website. Just for your information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Very nice job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, yep. Uh, Thank you. No question on the manifest. Yeah. Public input. Oh, look at that. Perfect timing. <laughs> Robin Corbio, Fort Smith Court. Can anybody leave? Look at that. No. Um, I just want to speak in support of one of the programs that Tom talked about, which is that after school program for those kids who just need a little extra something. I'm not speaking for the other teachers, but I've been in so many meetings where we have talked about if we just had that program for this kid, and we don't anymore. And it used to be a really beneficial program for those kids who were just on the edge and needed something more. Um, it was run by a certified teacher who did an exceptional job working with the staff in the building so that we had someone to go to and she could manage and organize all of those tasks for those students who become overwhelmed when they get them and kind of put them into chunks and teach them how to organize and attack that big chunk of work to get them back where they needed to be. Um, and I know it's been a couple years in the budget and it always seems to get taken out, but it's really an important program and I can't tell you the number of times over the last couple years in multiple meetings that I've heard teachers say, this kid would be perfect for that program if we still had it. So if you need more information on it, it it's a really important program that we lost a couple years back and I think our students need it. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, I thought you said you leave. Yeah. <laughs> Nate Cooper, uh, Campbell High School. Just real quick on the on the stipend uh, issues, we can add stipend positions to the the current agreement. There's a procedure in there, so okay. we can do it so long as we it was approved this year, budgeted for this year, and then we would amend the CBA the following year. So if the, I don't know, I know usually it has to be within the principal's budget. So right. I don't know if we're right. too far into the process for that to happen. But there has been a past practice, however, yeah. of, of amending those right. type of positions as they come up to either delete some that just are in the CBA that right. for all practical purposes haven't been mm -hmm. implemented for years or to add programs. Yes. So uh, since after you're in the process, you can add? Uh, it, it, again, I think it to the superintendent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's a... There has been some past practice to that effect. And there's a procedure within the CBA about right. how we would add, add a stipend position midstream in the contract. Okay. That's so, right. just wanted to clarify. Thank yeah. you. And I would just say we are in the process. Right. The, the superintendent's recommended budget has not <coughs> been generated yet because we're still in the process of discussing the budget and we haven't fully vetted all parts of the budget and certainly if 
we decide that uh, additional uh, stipended positions should be reflected in the budget, the superintendent's recommended budget can incorporate those. Thank you. Right, that'll bring us to non public. RSA 91 A 6.311. The dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigation of any charges against him unless the employee affected one has a right to a meeting and two requests that the meeting be open in which case the request shall be granted be the hiring of any person or public employee see matters which if discussed in public would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of the body itself body or agency itself unless such person requests an open meeting so me I'm sorry. Yes. Second. There we go. Yes. 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 Not public. Okay. Make a motion to accept the minutes, the draft minutes for 9915 non public. Second. Can I give you a time limit? For the discussion? Give you a time no. 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 <laughs> There's no one. Else. Oh, are they closed already? All those in favor? You should go. Aye. Yeah. Oh. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Opposed? Abstain. Aye. 301. You get that, Eric? Oh, that's right. She's not here, is she? No. I'll do it right now. Right, we're not public. 